The movie opens with a scenic view of the plains and terrain. A girl lies on the ground, and she seems unconscious. It seems she's been injured and thrown to the lakeside. Her cattle move here and there as an old man comes in front of her. He looks at her tattered clothing and assumes the worst. The girl, Mariam, has her clothes ripped from various parts. It's a very heart-wrenching scene. She is deeply injured and the old man carries her away. As the sun goes down on the horizon, the man carries the unconscious girl back to the house. The passers-by look at Mariam's condition and start gossiping about it. The man comes back, and all the family members are stunned to see Mariam's condition. She soon wakes up and looks around. Mariam's still shaken by her trauma and whatever bad things have happened to her. She's kept in a shed as a woman comes in and places some food in front of her, urging her to eat or else she'd die soon. The woman locks her in again, as her family members try to get her to talk about what happened to her. They think she's turned into a madwoman as she can't even remember what happened. Mariam's father, Tosin, goes to a factory-like place. The factory owner, who is also Tosin's brother, Ali tells Tosin that it is very disheartening as Mariam is like a daughter to him as well. They all think Mariam's honor has been snatched away as she got used. Ali ruthlessly calls Mariam a pleasure giver for being out alone and getting used, as she's seemingly torn her family's dignity apart. He curses her to die. Tosin tries to calm Ali down. The villagers have started talking about Mariam, calling her a sinner. Ali tells Tosin to get Mariam out of the village and kill her as she has tarnished the village's honor and discipline. The woman, who happens to be Mariam's stepmother, comes to Mariam's shed and tells her that she's sinned badly and will have to repent for it. As Mariam doesn't have a birth certificate, killing her wouldn't be a problem. Her stepmother tells her to wash up as per the customs of honor. The village has decided she'd be better off dead. Her stepmother leaves a long rope for her to hang herself, saying maybe there's a slight chance she'll go to heaven if she sacrifice herself while repenting. Mariam agrees. Early the next morning, Mariam ties the rope to the ceiling, ready to do the deed. She prays to God one last time before wrapping the rope around her neck. Her stepmother sees her trying to hang herself, and Mariam refuses to hang herself anymore as she sees the happy look on the woman's face. Ali tells Tosin to get rid of Mariam as quickly as he can as the hill village is waiting. They plan to lie to Mariam, saying they've found a suitor for her far away and she has to go meet him. She'd be eliminated along the way. Ali asks Tosin to tell the same story to all the villagers. The killing has to be done by a male member of the family, so they wait until Semel, Ali's son, comes back from the military. Riem gets flashbacks of her stepmother mistreating her and starts cleaning herself up. On the other hand, a van pulls up in a construction zone and a young man walks out. He greets everyone he meets. This young man is none other than Semmel. Riem's stepmother comes and excitedly greets him. Tosin doesn't say a word, and he doesn't know how to ask Semmel to kill Riem. Gleaming with pride and joy, Ali chats with Semmel. Then, he tells Semmel about his mission and that he has to carry on. Semmel isn't too happy about it, but he also can't do anything. Mariam is told she's going to Istanbul with Semel in the morning. Ali gives Semel a sum of money and a man to carry out the task. Semel is hesitant, but Ali insists. In the morning, a woman comes to Mariam and helps her bathe. She asks Mariam who did the inhumane thing to her, but Mariam remains silent. She just tells the woman that Semel is taking her to get married and start a new life. The old woman tries to persuade Mariam to tell the culprit's name so that she can be left alone and not eliminated from Earth. But Mariam is too stubborn. The old woman, who seems to be Mariam's aunt, caresses her and hugs her one last time. Tosin tells Semel that he can't do anything to protect his daughter, and he's torn apart by seeing his daughter's fate. He begs Semel to eliminate her painlessly and not think bad of her, as if she's an angel. Semel and Mariam walk away from the village. Mariam's stepmother is happy that she's going. The two of them are driven away and into the hands of death. They pass through hills and mountains without uttering a single word. Semel wakes up from a bad dream to see Mariam gone. He frantically looks for her and finds her outside the washroom. He pulls her away and berates her for going without his permission. He threatens not to speak to anyone from now on. And Mariam nods her head in fear. Semel doesn't want to kill her, but has no choice. The two soon reach Istanbul and walk around. They get on a boat and continue traveling to the main city. Mariam is very happy and excited to be in the city. Semel meets his brother in the city, whom Mariam thinks is going to marry her. She meets a woman who tells her this isn't really Istanbul and feels pity for Mariam, knowing what's about to happen. Semel tells his brother, Jakob, the whole story as well, and expresses how he couldn't get himself to kill her. Jakob is stunned to see Semel's viewpoint and yells at him for trying to slaughter her like a pig. Semel tries to defend himself, but Jakob fully supports Mariam and tells Semel it's not even her fault. Semel tells him how Mariam hasn't told her culprit's name, so it must be her sleeping around. Jakob cannot believe Semel. He taunts Semel for being such a heartless man, but Semel retorts, saying he can't go to the village with Mariam alive. He has to eliminate her. Jakob knows that the village would find and eliminate her if they knew she's alive, so he doesn't say anything anymore. Semel and Mariam leave the very next day and walk towards a huge bridge. Mariam is extremely scared of what's about to happen. He tells her to jump from the extremely high bridge and call upon God for the last time. He screams at her for tainting their name and sinning. 
He asks her to jump or he will shoot her, and Mariam desperately tells him she's not at fault. She tells Simo to send her message to her father, saying she's going back to her mother and has done nothing to shame Tosin. Mariam looks down into the deep fall and is frightened. She tells Simmel she will blindfold herself to not see the height she's standing on. She prepares to jump but is pulled away by him. Semmel is in a corner, crying and grabbing his head in his hands. Mariam tries to console Semmel as he stands up and walks up. Mariam follows suit. They look at the bustling city, and Semmel gets a call. He throws his phone away and the two keep walking. In another scene, an old man is sleeping in bed with a young woman. He jerks up as if after having a bad dream and quickly grabs some medicine. He goes to the bathroom and rinses his face. He takes some deep breaths and sits back down. He takes his car for a drive around with a woman. She asks the man, Irfan, if he's okay. There's something wrong with him, but he doesn't say anything. Irfan is fed up with his life and tells his wife, Isil, that he's going away to discover something profound. He is bothered by his monotonous life and tells Isil he'll come back to her one day. Irfan reaches his mother's house and hugs her tightly. He tells her he'll stay for the night, and she prepares a feast for him. He tells his mother that he is taking a break from his hectic life and repents for all that he's done and missed. He's extremely ashamed of his life and how he ignored everyone to live his luxurious life. He begs her for forgiveness, and his mother sobs in pain and grief. Irfan lives with his mother for a while, reminiscing about all his past memories. He goes on a boat, all alone. He throws away all his medicines and just decides to enjoy his leisure time. Semmel and Mariam are walking across the city as Semmel takes her to his friend, Silo. Semmel tells Silo about everything and asks for a place to stay. Silo gladly agrees and offers a resort for them to stay at. Semmel thanks Silo profusely. Mariam and Semmel reach the resort, and there are lots of fish. The manager there tells them to take care of the resort and the fish. The man goes away, and only Semmel and Mariam are left now. The two stay at the resort and start eating their breakfast. Mariam chokes on a fish bone and Semmel helps her. The two live comfortably there with no other place to go. Riem settles down and takes care of the house and cattle. Semmel and Mariem slowly get closer. But one day, it pours heavily as Semmel sees a very bad dream of Mariem flirting with a man. This angers him and he attacks Mariem, thinking it's real. He threatens to eliminate himself if Mariem lies. And Mariem is terrified. She keeps on repeating that she's done nothing wrong and he lets her go. Irfan suddenly comes to the place where Mariam and Semmel live. Irfan asks Semmel for a place to live, and Semmel agrees to let him stay there. The next day, Irfan and Semmel ride the boat for a while when Mariam comes. Semmel tells Mariam to stay and that they'll be back soon. Semmel soon gets a call from Silo saying Jakob called. Semmel tells Silo that everything is fine and there's nothing to be worried about. Semmel tells Silo to tell everyone that Mariam is dead and to spread the word. He quickly hangs up, and Irfan looks at him, all confused. Irfan asks him about it, but Semmel doesn't say anything. Irfan and Semmel come back to see Mariam sitting on the shore. The man who had left the resort is back. He asks Semmel and Mariam to go away now. Irfan tells them he'll find them a place and help them. They agree, and the three of them travel together. Irfan asks Semmel what he plans to do now, and Semmel replies that he'll figure out a way. He asks Semmel to work for him, and Mariam could work as a maid. Semmel isn't sure, but agrees anyway, having no other choice. Mariam is happy that she's got a job, too, and takes care of the boat. Semmel doesn't tell Irfan anything about Mariam, and Irfan thinks Mariam is his wife. They keep on traveling in Irfan's boat. Irfan takes care of both of them gladly. In the boat, Mariam and Semmel sit in silence. The next morning, Irfan goes shopping and leaves the boat with Semmel and Mariam. Mariam is impressed by Irfan's generosity, but Semmel warns him to not trust anyone so blindly and to not call him brother anymore in front of Irfan. They pretend to be a couple in front of Irfan. Mariam takes care of the whole boat and cleans as well as cooks it. One day, she finds a gun under Semmel's bed but doesn't say a word. But Ali gets a vague idea that Mariam is alive after Semmel never returns. He goes to Jakob, who's scared to see his father after so long. He asks Jakob where they are, but he refuses to answer. He tells Ali he doesn't know, but Ali yells at him. He had disowned Jakob years ago for leaving the village and plans to do the same with Semmel. Jakob is fed up with his father and asks him to get out, because Semmel came and left without telling him anything. He adds that he has no idea where Semmel went. Ali storms out, saying he'll kill Mariam no matter what. Semmel helps Irfan load and unload the boat. Irfan compliments and thanks both Mariam and Semmel for taking such good care of his boat. Irfan gives them both gifts to thank them for their help, and they gladly accept them. Mariam sees that she's been given a beautiful dress and puts it on. Irfan teaches Semmel how to use a radio to navigate the boat. Semmel looks at Mariam and is dumbfounded because she looks so beautiful. That night, Semmel and Ifrin start drinking and have dinner. Ifrin is grateful to have found people like them. Irfan tells Semmel about Mariam and her intelligence. Irfan asks him why the two of them left their village and came this far off. Semmel simply replies that it happened because of circumstances. Irfan nods and compliments Semmel for being so straightforward and innocent. 
Irfan pours his heart out and tells him how he's always wanted to be straightforward as well. Irfan tells Semmel how he was also in the military, and the two of them share their own experiences. Semmel asks Irfan why he's here in a boat all alone, and Irfan also replies that it's because of circumstances. Semmel doesn't ask any further questions. They sing and dance on the boat, but Semmel falls down. They laugh and laugh until all of Semmel's sorrow comes out and he starts crying. The two pass out as they drink the night away. On the other hand, Ali goes around the whole of Istanbul looking for Miriam and Semel. He interrogates everyone he knows about Semel. He soon finds out about Semel and Miriam living together. He sends a goon after them and eliminate Miriam. The goon goes around asking everyone about Semel. Irfan proposes to teach Miriam some new skills. He throws her a rope to learn the skills, but Miriam gets flashbacks of her being forced to hang herself. She cries and runs out of there, leaving Irfan confused. Semel tells Irfan that she's just a coward. Miriam goes on crying and sobbing because of the flashback, and Irfan is worried about her. He comes to talk to her and teaches her about tying a knot gently so as not to scare her. Irfan walks away from Riem so he does not make him angry. The three of them continue sailing away, going to a faraway destination. One day, a gorgeous lady stops by the boat. She turns out to be Irfan's student, and they have a long chat. Semel continues staring at the woman's body. Riem brings her a glass of water, and she's shocked to see a woman so free. Riem tells Semel that the woman is very beautiful. But Semmel retorts by saying it's all makeup and Miriam herself is way prettier. Miriam blushes at the compliment as Semmel walks away. The woman leaves soon. In the kitchen, Irfan makes the food as Miriam watches. He dances and makes Miriam laugh, which makes Semmel jealous. Irfan calls Semmel and asks him to dance with Miriam. But the two of them stand in silence. He asks Semmel to help with some chores, but Semmel says it's a woman's job. To which Irfan retorts, saying there are no women's jobs or men's jobs on his boat. He urges Semmel to work, and he begrudgingly agrees. At night, Riem looks out to the moon, and Semmel accompanies her. They talk about the moon and their collective childhood memories. Riem teases Semmel and talks about how stern he's always been. She asks him if they'll ever be able to go back to the village, and Semmel says no. She blames herself for everything that has happened, and Semmel asks her to forget it. The next morning, Riem brings Irfan a glass of water, and he asks her about her education. She replies, saying she only studied till the second grade. He teaches her some things about maps, and she's really excited to learn about it all. He tells her stories about sailors, and Miriam listens eagerly. At a small bazaar, Irfan sends Semmel to get some groceries, and Miriam tags along. Irfan tries to give Semmel his salary, but he declines. They get all their groceries and come back to the boat. Irfan hands a gift to Miriam, but she doesn't take it. Irfan insists, and she accepts it. It's a necklace, and Miriam loves it. Semmel sees this and doesn't say anything. As Irfan walks away, Semmel lets his anger out and corners Miriam for accepting the gift. He yells at her for letting a stranger touch her. She asks him to calm down, but he's ready to hit her. He calls her all sorts of names when Irfan finds them. Miriam screams as Semmel tugs the necklace off of her. Irfan is perplexed. Irfan asks about this, but Semmel tells him to mind his business rudely. Irfan tells him he feels betrayed. He tells them he didn't like being lied to and that was the reason he left Istanbul in the first place. Semmel angrily drags Miriam and they get off the boat. Irfan is upset as the necklace he gave her is lying on the floor. Miriam has finally had enough and asks Semmel what they're doing. Semmel asks her to shut up but this makes Miriam more enraged. She defends Irfan and yells at Semmel for always being so angry. She tells him she has done nothing wrong. She calls him sick, and Semmel doesn't say anything. Miriam decides she's done with Semmel bossing her around and walks away. Semmel gets angrier and walks away as well. Miriam gets scared and follows him because she has nowhere to go. Semmel calls Jakob, only to find out that Ali has been looking for them everywhere. Jakob tells him to be careful, and Ali can go to any lengths. Semmel agrees, and the two of them walk away into the bustling city. Irfan starts looking for the two as well. They walk and walk with nowhere to go. Finally, Irfan finds them and Semmel apologizes to him. Irfan forgives them. That's when Miriam tells Irfan the truth, they're cousins. Irfan says nothing and understands that circumstances must have been bad. He asks the two to live with him and give him company again. With that, he walks away, and Miriam tells Semmel to come along. They all return to the boat when Irfan's wife finds them. Isil and Irfan sit together for dinner, and she asks him why he's doing all this. Irfan just replies that he's living life how he pleases. He tells her he's sick of everything, but Isil just taunts him. She says he's just jealous that she's making more money than him. Irfan tries to stop her, but she doesn't. She blames him for abandoning her and calls him out for being so close to Miriam. Irfan tries to defend himself, but Isil doesn't hear it. Irfan compliments Miriam on her maturity, which enraged Isil even more. She hands him the divorce papers and walks away. Irfan doesn't really seem to care about all this. As Isil is about to leave, she warns Semmel about Irfan's intentions. Semmel doesn't say anything. In the boat, Irfan compliments Miriam and says Isil is jealous of her. Semmel doesn't like the proximity between Miriam and Irfan and steps in. Irfan understands that Semmel indirectly threatens Irfan. Miriam goes back to the kitchen without a word. Some moments later, other men on a boat tease Miriam and she hides. Semmel comes out and is about to beat them up, 
but they run away. Irfan stops him and asks what's wrong, but Semmel stays silent. At night, Irfan tells Semmel that he's very unpredictable and rude. He urges him to soften up, to which Semmel replies that the men deserved it. Irfan adds that Semmel would have gone mad with jealousy if Miriam was his girlfriend, to which he replies that they don't have girlfriends or boyfriends where they come from. Irfan tells him that it isn't good to eliminate women either. When asked how he knows about it, Irfan simply replies that it's in the news. Semmel tells him there's a story for every elimination, and no man talks to a woman who's related to Semmel. Irfan understands. The next morning, Irfan asks Miriam to hand him a bucket, and the two of them go for a sale. Semmel has passed out drunk. When he wakes up, he finds her gone. He sees that both Miriam and Irfan are gone. On the other hand, Miriam and Irfan are both collecting fish, and Irfan teaches her a lot of things. Semmel's rage gets out of control and he is ready to kill Irfan. Miriam asks Irfan a lot about Istanbul, and they look after cattle. It seems their relationship is fully platonic, but Semmel doesn't see it. Irfan is fascinated by all the stories Miriam tells him about her grandmother. They chat heartily and laugh. Miriam gets emotional as she remembers her home. Semmel sees Irfan and Miriam come back, and he helps them up. He tightly slaps Miriam, and she falls to the ground. Irfan tries to stop him, but Semmel fights him too. He keeps on hitting Miriam and threatening Irfan. He starts beating up Irfan as well, and he chokes him with a rope. Miriam fires a gun, and Semmel looks up. Miriam is frustrated and yells at how no one understands her. Miriam tries to kill herself, but Semmel stops her. She falls to the ground and sobs incessantly. She falls ill, and Irfan checks on her. Irfan sternly tells Semmel that Miriam is like a daughter to him. He urges Semmel to admit he loves Miriam. Semmel stays silent. Irfan tells him to stop being so angry and to start planning a good life for the two of them. Semmel tells Irfan that she's tainted and that she's Irfan tells him he can't blame Miriam for what happened and to accept her for who she is. Semmel finally admits that he loves Miriam. Semmel apologizes for his behavior earlier, and they laugh, promising to leave things in the past. Semmel is finally carefree and happy. Irfan tells Semmel to make Miriam her birth certificate. Irfan tells him he'll help them and they can go to some place where no one recognizes them. Semmel is happy, and Miriam stays in the boat when she's suddenly taken away. Semmel notices something is wrong, but it's too late. The goons take her away. Semmel and Irfan run after them but the goons drag her away. Miriam tries to run away, but the goons follow. Miriam screams for mercy as Ali runs after her and throws her into the water. Semmel defends her. It turns out the person who brutally used Miriam was none other than Ali, and that's why he wanted her dead. Semmel realizes this and cries as well. Miriam is screaming because of the flashbacks and begs her uncle to let her go. Semmel then goes to shoot his father as he realizes the crimes he has committed. Tosin is shocked to learn that his daughter was used by his own brother. He can't get himself to shoot his father and walks away. Tosin shoots Ali, but Semmel doesn't care. Irfan is happy that justice has been served and sails far away. Miriam and Semmel live happily ever after, thanking Irfan for leading them in the right direction. They pray that they will meet him again in the end.